Yo, Spawn Camp here. Timers in Unity are pretty simple. It counts like you or I would, only we can swap out the numbers for variables. And once we hit our condition, we can do some logic and reset our timer. Let's look at a basic timer. We have a private float timer for our script to count and a public float lap for us to assign the limit. For our script to count up, we just need to say timer plus equals time dot delta time. Delta time is the interval in seconds from the last frame to the current one. That way it's frame independent. And the plus equal is just a simpler way to write this. To see if it goes over our limit, we say if timer is greater than our lap, and if so, we'll do some stuff, and then most importantly, we'll reset our timer to zero. And for the logic, we'll just debug log a message and instantiate our particle effect. So now in Unity, our particle effect will go off every one second. And if we lower this, you'll see that it goes faster and faster. But now we have a problem. We're instantiating a lot of prefabs. So this is a good time to mention the destroy method. In this script, I called spawn destroy. We have a float for our timer. And in our start method, we can use a regular destroy method. And after you tell it what to destroy, you can pass in a time. And it will destroy it after that amount of time. So for testing purposes, we can just go ahead, open our prefab, and throw the script on the bottom. And with our script set at one second, our instantiated prefabs get destroyed as fast as they're created. Pro tip though, in the particle effects, you can set stop action to destroy. Next, we'll talk a little bit about coroutines. Since we're dealing with coroutines, we need to be using system.collections. After our update, we'll say public i enumerator, and we'll call this countdown. You can read up on coroutines, but basically we need a yield return statement. We got a wait for seconds. So when this coroutine is called, we'll use yield return, new, and wait for seconds. And we can just pass in our countdown time. Before I move on, there's lots of things we can do. We could wait for fixed update, wait for seconds, wait for seconds real time, and wait until, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So after we wait, we'll debug log and instantiate our particle effect. So we need a way to call this coroutine, so after we press space, then we'll start our coroutine. So we'll do our normal input.get key down, and then we're going to debug log, ping, and then we're going to start coroutine. And then we need our countdown coroutine and put the parentheses inside as well. So now when I hit space, after one second, our particle effect will play. It works great, however, if you spam the space bar, you're going to have a lot of particles go off. The simplest way to fix this is before we call our coroutine, we're going to stop all coroutines. Now, particles will only play if you give the coroutine time to wait. Maybe your script has lots of coroutines. Here's a better way. First, we'll declare a private coroutine that we'll call coroutine. If the coroutine is null or doesn't exist when we press our key, we'll assign our coroutine variable and start the coroutine called countdown. And then when our coroutine is finished, we'll set our coroutine back to null so our if condition can run again. Now we'll look at a common use for timers, fire rate. Here we have a private timer and a public fire rate. And here at the bottom, a method called fire. First, we'll increase our timer with timer plus equals time.delta time. And then I'll just debug log any time the mouse gets pressed. What does it look like if we succeed? We'll say if input.get mouse button down and our timer is greater than our fire rate, then we can fire. And after we fire, we set our timer back to zero. And that's about it for your basic fire rate. When I click the mouse, I can fire. But if I spam the mouse, it's only going to fire every one second. Now we'll look at that wait until coroutine I mentioned earlier. Like before, we'll need system.collections. We have our standard variables, but two bulls here, timed out and start timer. We'll use them to control our coroutine. In the update, if we click, we'll start our coroutine. Then below the update, we'll make our coroutine named wait until. 
First off, we'll ping the console, and then we can have our coroutine wait for a condition to be met. We can type yield return new and wait until. And inside the brackets, we can create an anonymous function with this lambda. And it looks like this. And our condition in this case is our timed out bool. Then if the condition is met, we'll continue and we'll do our pong. Now we need a way to write up some logic to toggle this boolean. But first, let's start our coroutine. And when we do, we'll set our start timer to true. And then if that's true, we'll count down with the timer minus equals time dot delta time. And then if our timer is less than zero, we can set timed out to true. But instead of that, we can just say timed out equals timer less than zero. And when timed out becomes true, our coroutine will finish. And this works, only I don't like our timer continuing, and you can still click. To fix that, we'll just put and not timed out in our two if statements. And now once we hit zero, we're done -zo. Next we'll talk a little bit about invoke, although I hear no one uses this anymore, but I'll show you how anyway. This script has an attack function. So when we press the space bar, we're gonna debug of course, and invoke, which takes the method name as a string, and then a time to wait. And we'll just pass in our time till attack. When we press the key, one second passes before attack is invoked. We have a similar deal with the spamming. It can be fixed by using cancel invoke method, which I can stick in a backspace key press. And if we're gonna cancel, let's have a lot. So there's also this invoke repeating function. It also takes a string, but two time variables. How long to wait before starting and how long between the repeats. So let's go ahead and comment out our original invoke and go into Unity. So now the function is repeating every second. And with the backspace press, we can cancel it. Anyway, that's just a few basic ways to implement timers in Unity. Until next time, Spawn Camp out.